Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you are not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. Hey guys, today is Saturday, December 17th and the day adds up and reduces to the number eight vibration. If today is your birthday, happy birthday. So today is associated with Saturnian energy and the day adds up and reduces to the number eight vibration. To me, Saturnian energy and the number eight vibration is so similar because both of these energies deal with time, both of these energies deal with tradition, both of these energy deals with systems. And Saturn is in Aquarius and Aquarian energy deals with humanity. And Saturn in Aquarius is positively aspecting the moon in Libra and Mars in Gemini. And this is making a grand air trine. So when it comes to say, information and how we're perceiving information on the inside our inner world that is working well when it comes to where our mind is focused that's a different story because the moon is squaring venus conjunct mercury in capricorn and with the moon squaring venus conjunct mercury in capricorn of course the mind and venus is focused on goals, legacies, goals, legacies, tradition, ambition, success. The moon and Libra, Libra energy deals with balance, diplomacy, wanting, seeking balance, diplomacy, and also the, uh, Libra is ruled by Venus. So the Venusian energy is present there. So I think of the moon in Libra, I think of how we seek acceptance, how we want to be accepted by others and how at times this can cause us to straddle the fence, fear making a decision or taking a step because we fear the consequences of taking a step or making a decision. Fear if we go right, we might miss out on what's left. And also too with moon and Venusian energy, I think of sometimes the insecurities that we suffer because when I think of Libra energy, I think of the scale. And with Libra energy, I think of how we put ourselves on one side of the scale. And then on the other side of the scale, this is where we balance the people we cross paths with, the places that we go, the things that we own. And it's like those things are a determining factor of who we are. Those things determine our value and our worth. And with the moon squaring Mercury and Venus and Capricorn, even though the air element works well together, I think of say how you could be in a social gathering or be amongst others, but at the same time, he hear something the wrong way or perceive something the wrong way because of insecurities that a person is dealing with within themselves. So this is where a pers someone could say something and what they say is really a compliment, but the other person perceives it in a negative way because they feel insignificant. And that could go either way when it comes to whoever you're dealing with. So I get a social aspect of the day because I look at the air elements and they give off a social energy. But at the same time, even though there's a social aspect to the day, they're just, it feels like when it comes to say the mind and the values, the mind and the values restrict the inner world, the inner conversations, restrict the inner world and the inner conversations because our mind is on what it is that we own, how far we've come, 
how far we've come in comparison to everybody else and what other people think of us. And when I look at the score, I think of how on the inside we'll want to police ourselves because we're thinking these things. And it's like everybody's thinking these things. So everybody is policing themselves and trying to fix themselves accordingly, thinking that someone else is thinking something that someone else is, isn't even thinking because that person is wondering if they're judging them or wondering if they're good enough to be here or wondering if, you know, while they came, is it good enough for them? It's like everybody is in their head policing their self, themselves. And the number eight energy is one where we'll have tunnel vision when it comes to things. Tunnel vision when it comes to things because the number, ener the number eight energy is such a focused energy. And with this focus, this focus could be great because that focus is what we'll use to attain success. But at the same time, that focus is what we'll use to create negative karma in our lives. And of course, I believe that we were taught karma. We were taught what good and bad behavior is. And the number eight energy and Saturn energy both deals with karma. But for me, I believe we were conditioned with karma. We were taught good behavior is what good behavior is exactly and that it's rewarded and what bad behavior is exactly and that it's punishable. Where with the number eight energy, the number eight energy likes to see things in a in a concrete way and like Saturn, both energies will feel like this is the way something is supposed to be because this is what how it was taught to me before. And Saturn and the number eight energy can cause us to feel stuck within a system or live our lives like we're an assimilator because of how we were taught when both energies are meant for us to utilize and create our own systems and become our own authorities. Because the number eight energy is one that is associated with wealth, abundance, it's a billionaire energy. But of course, we were conditioned to follow systems that will keep us trapped within a system and have a simulator, I feel like we're living within a simulator where we have to define success for ourselves and come up with a system that works with ourselves and our de our desires and what speaks to our heart. Like Saturn energy is your parental figure and they taught you how to live the best way they knew. But once you mature, you get, gain some self-awareness, understand yourself better, understand what's important to you, what isn't important to you and what kind of experiences that you want to have. And then you use that Saturn energy to become an authority. It's like you reset the clock with Saturn because Saturn energy deals with time. So you reset the time according to how you say it's supposed to be instead of redoing what someone else what you saw someone else do, even if it wasn't working for them. This is where we pick up, or the way how I would explain the number eight energy, Saturn and Capricorn and Taurus and even Virgo and the number four. I see these energies as people participating in a relay relay race. And, I've, and this was me too. We're in the relay race. The people that come before us, they're running with the baton and then they hand it to us. And them handing the baton to us is handing the traditions and the values. Capricorn and Taurus is nature to keep the traditions going like the number eight vibration and even the number six and the number four because these are community oriented energies. But anyways, they pass the baton to you and they pass their values and their traditions. And values are like steps, roadmaps to get somewhere. And some people, <clears throat> they take the baton and they're running through life and they're also teaching by example what they've been given, <clears throat> even though they saw that the person who gave them this thing, their life is miserable and that's not what they want for themselves, but they're blindly doing everything that person did and then confused about their results. Where when the baton is passed to you, when the values is passed to you, when the traditions are passed to you, this is where you have to reflect on yourself in this moment and the kind of lifestyle that fits you and ask yourself, does these values, do these traditions celebrate me? Do they make me feel good about myself? And this is where you have to recreate it for yourself. It's just like, say, 
success. Recreate your definition of success. But with me, within the last year, the number eight energy has been super strong in my life because since the last year, I've came up with a system that works for me. And I think it was with the Taurus. It was one of the placements like months back, almost a year back in April or something. Maybe it was like the Taurus new moon. I, I've been talking about it. I'm, I'm not even sure when, but anyways, systems. It's all about systems and creating a system that works, creating a system that works and reprogramming yourself to not look at certain things as punishable and certain things certain things as punishable where say with some people they could be in a toxic and abusive dynamic when it comes to family members but because they were raised that you never turn your back on family they'll feel so guilty to go their own way even though they're being abused and mistreated and this is where you got to use common sense and then observe how something is making you feel. But then pay attention to something as simple as that and how much it could have a stronghold on a person. Where for me, I asked myself, if I took away this person's title, would I put up with that from just anybody? And if the answer is no, then I already got my answer. But <clears throat> when it comes to the spirit animal associated with the day we have the elephant and when i think of the elephant energy i think of say ancient energy i think of wisdom age and when i look at the ener the elephant carrying that fire for the first time i'm seeing it as the whole carrying the baton thing where we were past the baton. We're in a relay race, but we're in our own race. We're not running anybody else's race. We're not on anybody else's path, but we were handed some things based on where we were raised and who raised us. They hand us some things. And this is where we have to look in the bag that we were handed with values and traditions and beliefs and look at what makes the bag heavy and ask ourselves, is it worth carrying this heavy bag? So I look at the fire that the elephant is carrying. And when I see the fire, I think of the things that excites us, the things that make us feel good about ourselves. You wanna empty out your bag until it's super light and what's in it is what excites you. It's that fire that's blazing within you. What do you have that kind of excitement for? Like today, I came to the realization. I came to the best realization today while I was on the yoga mat. The best realization, and also too with the elephant, I like the third eye thing here and the fire, which shows that it's being guided by it's being guided by the universe. It's being guided by something bigger, and that's what influences that fire. But I came to this realization today of this channel and all the things that I want to do with it, and it felt so good to think about the future of this channel and all the different things that I want to do with it. It felt so good because for the first time, I'm into something that I can see myself committing to and building forever. Where normally the thought of being tied or tethered to something felt like the devil card for me. It felt like I was choosing to be a slave to something. Where when it comes to this, it just, it does something to my heart. And for the first time, I saw myself planning out something where I didn't care about the money. It was more about how it makes me feel. Because don't get me, don't get it twisted. Like I love business and entrepreneurship. And for me, money is a way of keeping score. Money is a way of seeing how well I'm doing when it comes to certain things. But for the first time, I'm looking at something and I'm not looking at the monetary gain. I'm looking at the influence. And it made me emotional as I laid on the yoga mat and I'm thinking all the things that I want to do with soul and vibration. Because this name, this name reflects the beginning of my spiritual journey, my awakening. And the name soul and vibration was the name of my first salon. It wasn't supposed to be this. I didn't even know it would be this. My first salon was Soul and Vibration and I broke it down to Soul Live Beauty Studio because of course I'm I'm your weirdo, meaning 
who names your salon soul and vibration but i do and i broke it down to soul live and the name was inspired by a a butterfly by butterflies and i've told a story before about the salon it wasn't even a salon it was a butterfly store and i turned it into a salon and eventually selling it and moving on and when i owned it i felt like i was trapped i felt like a bird in a cage like i built a beautiful cage for myself and I just wanted to be free and I sold it and moved to California. But anyways, this like what we do here and bringing information to you guys and eventually in the future, I'd love to introduce other things and probably even invite other people. Like I just have so much ideas for it. And of course, for me, my purpose is to remind people like myself not to give up on your dreams and to keep redefining your life until it makes sense to you. And to keep asking questions until you have the answers that satisfy you. Because once we put our mind to something that's in our heart and we move forward, the creator is always going to support us. And whenever we run into walls or challenging situations is just the creator's way of redirecting our step and that's it it's not meant to tell us to quit it's just a little bit of a nudging in a certain direction so when i look at the elephant energy and i think of like wow finally carrying this flame that i'm so excited about and money is not even the motivation where before money has always been the motivation for me, when it comes to everything, like, yes, but like, don't get me wrong, being creative and expressive is a big part. But then I'm also excited about how much money it's going to make. Even though I'm someone who is super free, frugal, super frugal, probably one of the most frugal people you've ever known. Every big purchase I make, I need to justify it or in my head, like, work it out. Why am I making it? But of course, I guess maybe with some of my other placements, for me, having a controlling nature, the money is a sign of like, oh, I'll be safe. Oh, I'll be able to take care of myself. And I think of it with like my Scorpio placements, my Scorpio stellium, it's like, okay, well, if I could take care of me, then I won't need anyone. It's that kind of energy. It's more of a fear based. It's more fear based than anything if I'm honest with myself. But when I come when it comes to like what I want to build with soul and vibration, it's more influence and just laying on the mat and thinking about it and where it's came from and the whole path made me so emotional because it was once a salon and then it wasn't until I went all the way to California I was I was able to start this channel. And it just represents so much to me. And I just know that everyone who tunes into it, it mirrors them in some way that some of you could feel it and some don't even realize that's why you show up and you watch because something about it, something about everything, you see yourself in it. And we are somewhat narcissistic to a certain extent because the things that we like, we're seeing ourselves back in it. So the things you admire in a person are things that you admire within yourself. And sometimes we we have a hard time seeing ourselves that way. So we admire these things in other people, but these things are within us. It's like when I do my nail chart readings and a person will say to me, oh, I love how you explain things. And I'll look at their chart and I'm like, you're good at explaining things too. Like every compliment they give is something I see in their chart. So it's just interesting how, you know, the things we like in people is really ourselves that we're admiring. And the things that we can't stand in people are things within ourselves that we want to reject for whatever reason or don't understand. The card that comes up is the four of pentacles in the reversal position. This is the card in the upright position. And when I think of the four of pentacles in the reversal position, I just think of no longer holding on tight to the idea of some kind of a structure, stability, or foundation. I think of when we had the lockdown, how we realized that our like stability is an illusion and change is inevitable. So when I look at that energy with the elephant energy, I just look at, say, someone. It's like what comes to mind is like someone being in an egg. It's like a spiritual vibrational egg. And 
something clicking for you and having this realization and the egg click the egg cracks and it's like a rebirth and then i go to the elephant energy where it's like you're tapping into the third eye and carrying your flame carrying your flame and letting go of everything else that that you were carrying and now carrying what speaks to your heart where for me with the elephant energy i'm carrying my flame my flame meaning Sometimes I'll get on myself because I won't get on myself for long. It, it'll be like a quick thought because I've come to the point where like I'm good at not getting on my own back anymore. But I'll have a quick thought and like a child asking a question. I feel like those questions should be answered and you should be present in the moment with that child. So when my mind will think certain things that creates an uncomfortable feeling within me, I'll stop what I'm doing if I can and reflect on it to create more understanding for the part of me that doesn't understand why that thought came up. And of course, normally it goes back to say what's familiar, what we've been conditioned to see life and how we've been conditioned to want to be, how we've been conditioned to have certain goals. And I look at myself and how I live my life in such an unorthodox way. And I found myself questioning if I was wrong for living my life in such an unorthodox way. And then I asked myself, but what if I was to live this traditional life? And I just imagined like, what if I was to do this, 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 and that? And I just felt so stuck. And then I realized it's like my heart, my heart knows because it's the mind that questions because the mind to me is like a is like an overseer or someone who's trained to i think of like a shepherd's dog it's like the mind is is conditioned or trained to keep you in order and of course the heart is what sets you free the heart is what motivates you to run like you know it's like imagine being trapped somewhere and the heart keeps telling you to run but the mind keeps saying don't run don't run we don't know what'll happen if we run and the heart is like, well, we know what, what will happen if we stay here. So F it, let's just run. So yeah, the, the heart already knows, but it's the mind's job to keep us safe. And I feel like that, like I already know what'll happen if I have this experience because I've already had it. So I'd rather suffer the consequences and run and see what's out there because life is all about experiences. And I want to have experiences and I don't want to define my, I don't want to go after experiences that has been marketed to me to have. Like just because they'll set, you know, they'll market to you. This is the, this is the way you should live your life. This is the way you should do that. This is the way you should do this. If it doesn't feel right to me, I'm not going to do it. But I found myself reflecting and wondering if I'm missing out and I had to really ask myself, am I rebelling against this thing? Am I restricting myself from this thing? Or is it that I'm truly not interested? So it's important to just check in with yourself often, check in with yourself often and journal it out and see what your heart needs and recognize when your mind is trying to protect you by keeping you in a safe space because that's the mind's job it's going to keep you contained keep you yeah contained because in a video i've mentioned that we all share the same mind but i also feel like the mind is like gravity the mind is like the mind to me is gravity it's gravity that keeps us absorbed within a thing because if you were to ever try to make sense of life your mind will only keep go bringing you in circles because you can't think your way out of it. You have to feel your way out. You can't think your way out. You have to feel your way out. And that's what I've realized. I can't think my way out or think my way to understand the universe. I have to feel my way to see and understand the universe. You guys... <laughs> I'm laughing because when I was getting ready, I was like, okay, these videos are going to be short and I'm going to make them, you know, I'm going to shorten them, get straight to the point, which I always get to the point. But then I also said, well, I'm not going to make it short if I got a lot to say. And there were so many times when I was meant to wrap up, but it kept pouring because there was, I just had so much to say, which shows how much 
I enjoy these. And yeah, when I enjoy something, I just, I can't get enough of it. But it was such a pleasure sharing a part of your day with you. If you'd like to book a tarot or a natal chart reading, the link is in the description box below. If you'd like to support the channel or check out the exclusive content on Patreon, that link is also in the description box below. If you're still here with me, I'd love to hear about it. Please let me know by dropping me a pink heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.